Welcome to St. John's Sunday School. Jesus Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hello and welcome to our Enduring Faith Lesson 6. We're going to talk about Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Our text will be Matthew 28, 1-15 from the English Standard Version. Uh, we're going to change up a little bit this week. I would like you kids to follow along with me whenever I say the opening prayer. So let's fold our hands and you can repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, help us to learn more about the great news of Easter and the Resurrection. Bless our time together. In your name we pray. Amen. Like I say, welcome again, and we're going to discuss the cornerstone of our faith and anybody that believes in Jesus' faith in the world. So we're going to read, like I said, from Matthew 28, 1 through 15. If you want to get a Bible out, follow along. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version. Most of them are going to be similar. There will be a few differences in the wording. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes was white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. So, think of a time when you were really, really sad. Did you ever think you could be happy again? Many times, during the months before Jesus went up to Jerusalem, he told his disciples he was going to suffer and die. And each time, he also told them he would rise again on the third day. But the disciples didn't remember this, or they didn't understand it. They also thought he was going to Jerusalem to become king instead. They saw him killed on a cross. Their dreams of ruling with Jesus were dead, and they were filled with sadness. They forgot all about his promise to rise again. On the second day, on Saturday, they stayed hidden in Jerusalem because they were afraid that they would be captured and killed also. Since that day was the Sabbath, the women rested, waiting for the third day, Sunday, to take spices to give Jesus' body a better bur burial. They forgot all about his promise to rise from the dead, too. So I don't think that anybody really understood what Jesus was talking about when it all happened, but soon enough it would make sense. Early Sunday morning... The women started off for the tomb. As they walked along, they remembered the huge stone that Joseph and Nicodemus had rolled in front of it. They were not strong enough to roll it back, so they wondered, how were they going to get inside? Suddenly, there was this earthquake, and an angel came down from heaven and rolled the stone back for the women, and then he sat on it. When the guards saw the angel, they were terrified. 
They shook and fell down like they were dead. And the angel waited for the women to arrive at the tomb. When the women came, the angels told them, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen. And he said, Come, see the place where he lay. So the women went in and looked. There was his garments and everything folded up neatly on a bench. And Jesus was nowhere to be found. So, the angel told them, Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. The women turned and rushed back towards the city to tell Jesus' disciples. But while they were on their way, Jesus met them and said greetings. They came close, grabbed hold of his feet, and they worshipped him. Jesus told them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. So the women right away knew who he was. They put hands on him after he had been raised. He was physical. He was right there in their presence. Not a spirit, but a true human. So, Friday had been one of the saddest days for these women's lives. But on Sunday morning, Jesus turned their sorrow into great joy. Sometimes we have sad days when bad things happen and they leave us hurt. We might think we will never be happy again, but Jesus can take away that hurt. By his death and resurrection, he has given us a bright new future. Like the women, we have very good reason to rejoice and be happy. Christ's resurrection terrifies his enemies, such as the guards at the tomb and the chief priest. But it brings great joy to those who follow him. This story is most certainly true. The resurrection stands at the center of the salvation story and the foundation of our faith. It is the fulfillment of God's prophetic word and is the crowning moment in all of human history, Jesus' victory over death for us all. Because with the first man came sin, you know the story of Adam, with Jesus came resurrection and eternal life for all that believe. So, we have new life in Jesus. We are no longer dead in our sin because of what he has done for us. So, for the older children, here's a little more to think about. What about that big question? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Well, you have to have your faith. If we could see Jesus with our own eyes, touch him, feel that his body is warm and alive, put our fingers where the nail wounds are, and put our hands into his side where the spear poked through it, then we would know for sure Jesus really rose from the dead. Too bad we can't do that. But Jesus' disciples did. They saw and touched the nail marks in his hands. Look at Doubting Thomas. He said he would not believe until he saw and felt. But when Jesus showed up and told him that blessed are those who do not see and believe. So, they saw him eat fish. Remember after his resurrection... Jesus met up with the men, and they sit down and had fish by the sea. They talked with him at different times in different places for up to 40 days that he was on earth after he rose from the dead. Once, he even appeared to more than 500 believers in one place. There are many accounts in the Bible of where Jesus appeared after his resurrection. Now the Jewish leaders spread lies about Jesus' disciples stealing his body from the tomb and told people he rose from the dead. But Jesus' tomb was guarded by soldiers, and the disciples were hiding in a locked room. They did not have the courage or a chance to sneak past the guards and take his body away. 
And one more thing. Jesus' enemies could have stopped all the talk of his rising from the dead if they could have shown Jesus' dead body. Then everyone would have known the disciples were lying, and the stories would have been stopped immediately. But they couldn't do that, because Jesus had risen from the dead. And another thing about that is, most of the disciples were martyred, or they were killed for their faith, and if you believe in something that much, it has to be true. So that is why we say, Jesus Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. And let us close with a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for your resurrection. It changes everything. Help us to go and to tell everyone about this amazing event and the new life we have in you. In your name we pray. Amen. So, thank you for tuning in. As always, comments, questions are appreciated. Uh, make sure to check out the resources that we've got to go with the lessons. Uh, feel free to post pictures of artwork, crafts, etc. so we can see how our talented children are doing. Um, go forth, spread the word, and God's blessing on your week.